Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Catherine. Getting errors in your code can be very annoying and sometimes it can take hours to figure it out. In this video, I'm going to show you various errors you might get while programming in Java and how to solve them. Let's take a look at an example program. Here we have a class called example and inside of our example class, we have a method, the main method, and inside of that, the way it's implemented is we want to print out Blondie Bytes in the console. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm using IntelliJ per usual. And I'm just going to go ahead and run the main method and see what happens. Here we have Java, you know, semicolon expected. And it happened on line 4, 45 characters in. And so that's what that 445 means. And what does this really mean? Usually it means you forgot a specific symbol somewhere in your code. In this case, it was a semicolon. So if I put a semicolon here, that's gonna solve the error. Sometimes you might be forgetting a parenthesis or you know, semicolon like I did here or a comma or you know, a curly bracket. This is a pretty common error and it's called a syntax error because you've forgotten some character inside of your code. That's a part of the syntax of the language, in this case, Java. Now, this error message is pretty great because, you know, it told us something was expected, we knew there was a missing symbol, and we were able to add that. And once you, you know, continue to program, you'll be able to kind of see these errors a little bit more clearly and be able to add things in as you see fit. So if you ever get something expected or something unexpected, you know, some symbol that's unexpected, check your syntax, check to make sure your code is compliant with the way the language works or with how the syntax works for that specific language. Now if we go ahead and run this with the semicolon in place, we'll go ahead and see Blondie Bytes here in the console. Now let's take a look at another program. Here we have a program that is going to print out three random numbers. We start off by creating a random number generator here on line 7, and we're able to do this because we've imported the functionality on line 1. Then we go ahead and pick a mod, and if you want to know what modulos are and that functionality, I can definitely make a video about it. Just leave a comment down below. And then on line 9, we go ahead and create an int array, and this is where we use that mod value. And essentially, each entry in this array is going to have a random number that's between negative 49 and 49 inclusive, and so including those 49s as well. Then we go ahead and access each entry in the array that are indexed by 0, 1, and 2, and print them out to the console. So let's go ahead and run the program, see what happens. And in the console, we should get three random numbers, and that's what we get. If we go ahead and run the program again, they could be positive, they could be negative. They're going to be between negative 49 and 49 because we have that mod value that we give it. Now, what would happen if I tried to access index 3? Index 3 is not going to exist because we have index 0, index 1, index 2, Index 3, there isn't an item there, it's just null. It doesn't exist, not a part of numbers, because there's nothing there. If I go ahead and try to run the program, we're going to get an error because that, you know, third index, the item, the fourth item in numbers, it doesn't exist. And that's why we get this array index out of bounds exception. That index is not in the bounds of the numbers array. The numbers array only has items at index 0, 1, and 2, and it does not have anything at index 3. It's outside the bounds of that array. And again, here it tells us exactly where this happened. It happened on line 16. And if I select this, it brings me down right to where the error is, and it's on line 16 because index 3 does not exist inside of the numbers array. To correct this error, like the error I have here, you can either add another item to the array at creation or remove the line of code that accesses index 3. So basically that means our options are to change this to a 0, 1, or 2, or we could go ahead and add another item to our array here. So if we add another item and then go ahead and try to print this out, we should be in the clear because now that third index item exists, and that's what we get in the console. Now, this index out of bounds exception is not a syntax error, but it's an error based on the program's logic, the fact that it's accessed something outside of an array's bounds. 
It's also called a runtime error because the size of the array is defined at runtime rather than compile time. Another error you might have is a variable name misspelling. Let's say I put number here instead of numbers and I'm gonna get an error. Here it's gonna say, once we run this, we'll be able to see this error. You can already kind of see it's red here, but it says cannot resolve symbol number. This just means the program doesn't know what you're talking about because number, the variable number, is not defined in code. You also might misspell a package name or a class name. So let's say we decided not to spell system correctly and we get an error. In this case, we also get the fact that it's not going to resolve that symbol because it's not defined in the program. Running this again, we see this package, this misspelled package, does not exist within Java. This again is a syntax error, meaning the syntax of the sequence of tokens is incorrect and it's found at compile time, when the program is compiled to be run by the computer eventually. It's not based on the logic of the program and it's found before the program actually runs. So we can go ahead and fix this here and then go ahead and run the program again. And so misspellings can really get you when you're programming in Java. And that's when you know we get these unresolved variables, that's when we go ahead and spell check our program and make sure all of the syntax is correct. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you keep getting those null pointer exceptions and wanna know what they mean, comment down below and I'll make a video about them. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss any new programming tutorials and thanks for watching. You'll never be my home.